All right, everybody, welcome back. Today, we're taking a deep dive into the world of cryptocurrency, specifically CEXs. CEXs. Yeah. Centralized exchanges, you know, those platforms everyone's using to trade Bitcoin, Ethereum, all that jazz. So we've been getting a ton of questions from you listeners, like how do they actually work? Are they safe? And what's the deal with all the jargon limit orders, cold storage? What does it all mean? Well, today we're going to break it all down. Sounds good. Happy to dive in. Perfect. So imagine this. You've got a handful of Bitcoin and you're thinking, hmm, I wouldn't mind swapping some of this for, say, some Ethereum. <laughs> now you need a place to make that swap happen, right? Right. You need a marketplace. Yeah. That's essentially what CEX is. It's a platform where buyers and sellers converge to trade cryptocurrencies. OK, that makes sense. So it's like the New York Stock Exchange, but for crypto. Exactly. Except instead of trading traditional stocks, you're trading digital assets like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, you name it. Got it. But there are tons of these exchanges out there. What makes CEXs stand out, especially for someone just starting out? Because I've tried navigating some crypto platforms, and let me tell you, it's not always the most user-friendly experience. You're telling me. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a key appeal of many CEXs. They're designed with accessibility in mind. Think of it like this. They want to make it as easy as possible to jump into the crypto market. So are you saying I can just like use my regular dollars or euros to buy crypto directly on a CEX? Often, yes. They act as a bridge between traditional finance and the crypto world. Interesting. So they streamline the whole process, making it less intimidating for newcomers. Precisely. And on top of that, many CEXs offer features that seasoned traders are accustomed to, like different order types. Order types. Yeah. yeah, like, you know, how you want to buy or sell your crypto. Do you want to buy it right this second, no matter the price? Or are you a bit more strategic and only want to buy if it drops below a certain price? Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely more the strategic type. So how do I do that on a CEX? Well, that's where limit orders come in. You basically set a price alert. You tell the exchange, hey, if this cryptocurrency hits this price, buy it. Ah, so it's like an automated system. Pretty cool. And what about the other way you mentioned, buying immediately, regardless of the price? That's a market order. It's all about speed and ensuring the trade goes through right away at the current market price. Got it. Limit order for strategy, market order for urgency. This is starting to make a lot more sense, but with all this buying and selling happening, what about security? I mean, we hear horror stories about crypto hacks all the time. Yeah, security is paramount. No system is foolproof, but reputable CEXs invest heavily in security measures. One of the big ones is something called cold storage. Cold storage? Like keeping my Bitcoin in a freezer? Uh-huh. Not quite. It means storing the majority of the cryptocurrency holdings offline. So they're not actually connected to the internet, which significantly reduces the risk of hacking. Ah, so it's like a digital vault. Mm. Much safer than leaving it vulnerable online. Exactly. And this ties into another interesting aspect of CEX's regulation. Regulation? Yeah, because they often operate under existing financial regulations. They can offer a certain level of consumer protection. Hmm, I hadn't thought of that. So it's kind of a trade-off, right? You get the convenience and some safeguards, but you're also relying on a centralized authority. You hit the nail on the head. It's a balancing act. Some people love the ease of use and relative security of CEXs. Others are wary of that centralization aspect because it means potentially giving up some control over your assets. Which, let's be honest, kind of goes against the whole decentralized ethos that initially drew many people to cryptocurrency in the first place. You're absolutely right. It's a tension that's still playing out in the crypto space. And it's not just CEXs in the mix, right? We've also got those decentralized exchanges or DXs starting to gain traction. What's the deal with those? DXs are really fascinating. They operate without a central authority at all, aiming for a true peer-to-peer -peer trading experience. So no middleman. Exactly. But that comes with its own set of pros and cons, of course. Makes sense. We'll definitely have to do a whole other deep dive on diddlexes another time. They sound like a whole other beast. They definitely deserve their own dedicated conversation. But for today, the key takeaway is this. Whether you choose a CEX or a diddlex depends entirely on your priorities. Right, like whether you prioritize ease of use or maybe you value anonymity and control above all else. Exactly. It's all about finding the platform that aligns best with your individual needs and risk tolerance. This has been super insightful. So to recap for our listeners, CEXs are like the on-ramps to the crypto highway. They're user-friendly, generally pretty secure, and they bridge the gap between traditional finance and the world of crypto. But, and this is a big but, they are centralized, which means you're placing a certain degree of trust in a third party. 
Couldn't have said it better myself. And as you explore CEXs, here's a final thought to ponder. How do you think these platforms will evolve as blockchain technology continues to mature? Ooh, that is an interesting question. Will they become more decentralized over time, maybe even incorporating some of the features of DEXs? Or will we see entirely new models emerge? Only time will tell. For now, keep those questions coming and keep exploring the ever-evolving world of cryptocurrency. Until next time.